Hi, I'm Kyle Justice, and I am a television producer at Awesome Science Media. My wife and I have been homeschooling for over 15 years. We have eight children, and all of them are going through homeschool. Now, it's funny as I wasn't homeschooled when I was growing up, and uh, it's been an adventure for our family, uh, me as the husband and father to being able to encourage, especially my wife who does most of the academics. Part of what I do is I help set the vision as well as uh, get, really find out what are the gifts of my children. And my wife and I do this together, but uh, a lot of the older kids now, uh, they have been uh, following some of the different things God has laid on their heart to do for the rest of their lives to be an impact for the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the things we've discovered as a family, as well as uh, maybe some resources that you'll be able to, to look into and to help uh, encourage your kids as they grow. And you might call our family a little eclectic in, in how we approach things. Uh, we're not uh, really highly regimented in uh, the curriculum that we do, although we have a set, set uh, basic parts of the curriculum. But really what we want to do is uh, set up our children so they, they learn the basics and then they have the rest of the, the day, the week to pursue the things that God has put on their heart to do. And I'm going to kind of walk you through that. One of the, the things that I've, I've done with all of our children when they're babies and, and they're laying in my arms, I mean, just hours old and and thinking and looking and praying and saying wow what what does god have for you you know what role are you going to play and just starting to pray for them right there and uh, that's kind of the first step as parents as we can do uh, and then see how we can encourage and grow them in that if you're a believer and you're saved uh, by the blood of christ and you have the bible says a, a purpose or a role that god has determined way beforehand, before creation. In fact, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So if you kind of catch that, God has works for, for each of us, and he planned it before the creation of the world. That's really amazing when you think about it. God in his mind, in his vast mind, he looked at every one of us and you as a parent and then your children that, that God has works for us to do. You know, even when Adam was walking with God before he ever sinned, he gave Adam work to do in the garden, right? And so we have work here to do here on this earth before we make it into eternity. And uh, there's probably pretty good reasoning to think that we'll have work there to do too. But while we're here on this earth, we have work to do for the Father to glorify the kingdom. And it's exciting. Uh, in fact, I'll talk about it in a few minutes. But when we get into that, that place that God has for us, it's exciting. We're, we're energized and we're like doing great things for the kingdom of God. And it's exciting. I'm really encouraged by Psalm 127, 4 through 5, which says, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. When I read that verse, I think as a father, as well as a husband, that, you know, I think a quiver is seven or eight, I think. I don't quite remember. It's somewhere in there. But the fact is, uh, I have my quiver, and each of my children, as it says, arrows in the quiver, you know, we have an enemy, and the Ephesians 6 says that we're in a spiritual battle. And so each of my children, I just feel like we're doing to, to help prepare them as they, they enter into adulthood to, to be spiritual warriors, um, to make an impact in the kingdom of God. And, you know, all of us are, are working through our lives to our salvation, we're being sanctified, we fall, we get up. We repent, we keep going, and God is gracious, and he still wants to use us. Even Peter, when he fell big time, and remember Jesus before that whole time when he denied Christ, he said, you know, Peter, you know, I'm going to use you, and you're going to be the rock. And uh, so God already had that ordained. Jesus already knew who Peter was going to be, even though he fell. And so the grace of God, when Jesus rose from the dead, what is the first thing he did? He said, you know, go get Peter and tell him. 
And so God wants to use us to redeem us and to keep using us for the work that he has. So that's exciting. And then Malachi 2.15. And did not he make one, talking about husband and wife, yet he had the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. What's really kind of cool in that verse is that as a husband and wife, um, our, the desire of our father is that we raise godly offspring, that they accomplish his purposes, and that they do things for the kingdom. And, um, you know, it's not perfect. <laughs> we make mistakes. And, uh, but if we keep those doors open and encouraging our children and enabling them to uh, move forward in the gifts that he has, then that's, that's awesome because we're fulfilling the things that God has for us as parents, and then we're seeing those things fulfilled in our children. And that's, there's very few things so exciting to see as our children following the Lord and what He has for them, and the purposes to be laid out in advancing the kingdom here on earth. So this August will be my 50th birthday, and I'll be married 28 years here coming up in another month or so. And I mentioned we have eight children. They range from four to 21 years old. Noah is our oldest, and I'll talk more about his history, but some of you might know him. He hosts one of our series called Awesome Science. There's 12 episodes, and he did those when he was a teenager. And a lot of people are like, what, he's 21? Yeah, he's in college. He's studying engineering, mechanical engineering, and space, and he's part of a space club. And it's going to be great to see what God does with him in the area of science. Um, and I mentioned I grew up in a public school here in the Portland area. I feel like a really great experience, and I'll get a little more into that later because God used that to help me to do what I'm doing now. My wife and I, we met when we were 14, but we didn't actually start dating until we were about 20. Within uh, less than a year, we were married, and, uh, and then we didn't have children for about six years, uh, just enjoying marriage, finishing our degrees, and uh, God was working on us and growing us and maturing us. And then at finally about 28 years old, we started having our children. I think for my wife and I, it was a conscious choice that uh, it just wasn't going to be homeschooling the academics, but it was going to be discovering who uh, was going to do what, whose, whose gifts were going to come out and what those gifts were, and being able to encourage our children to grow in those gifts. I'm a television producer and have done work for big networks like ESPN and National Geographic. I've been Emmy nominated for my work, but I actually started producing television when I was about 11 years old. So I got my start way early and it was kind of when the, the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back films came out way back in the theaters. It kind of took my twin brother and I by by storm and we were like, wow, we want to do this. We want to produce movies. And uh, video was available to us back then. In fact, my dad's hobby was filmmaking. He had all the video gear, all the film gear, and he let us uh, produce our own films, our own videos, our own television shows. We even had our own family TV show called Justice World, where we interviewed parts of our family and we did different commercials and stories. And, and we were doing that at like 11, 12 years old. And that was back when video gear was not nearly as accessible or high quality. And what's interesting is our high school and, and even our junior high school started offering video production classes uh, back in the early 80s. And so my twin brother and I, we got on in, into those classes and then we started uh, excelling. In fact, uh, we excelled very quickly through the program. We spent most of our time doing television. Our high school had a big television studio. PM Magazine, which is a nationally syndicated television show, uh, did a story on my twin brother and I. And here's a quick look. It may look like a typical day on a typical television set, but it's not. It's part of Jefferson High School's TV program. No other Portland High School offers its students such an extensive service. And along with the special program come budding Cecil B. DeMills. You know, it's amazing how many things you can do with video. And you can take and just do anything you want with it. You find out pictures match, and, you know, it's like, wow, you know, that's neat. Okay. 
Sean and Kyle Justice are identical twins with an identical interest. They are video wizards. They came to Jefferson as advanced placement students and are already a year ahead of most television students their age. Jefferson TV advisor Pat Rosencrantz thinks highly of the pair. This year they're in JTV News uh, as freshmen. And next year, as sophomores, they'll be in the advanced television lab. After that, well, we're probably going to have to come up with some courses just for them, because they'll be through with all our program by the time they're juniors. TV production has become a 24-hour-a-day endeavor for Sean and Kyle, and it all started at the Justice Home. They have their own camera equipment and even their own control room. Stand by. Stand by. Well, save. Get the camera on. Q on. Hello, we're coming to you again from Justice Studios in Portland, Oregon. I'm Kyle Justice, and I'll be interviewing some parts of my family. Their father, Larry, got the boys interested in video, and he likes to help the boys improve their skills any way he can. Uh, here, I'm on the corner of 39th and Stark, where we are looking at a few trees for the tree lot. And um, for our house in Justice World, we're going to go back there pretty soon, but now we're going to interview some people who are looking for Christmas. The twins have been honing their production skills by taking their camera equipment out into the field to interview people on the street. Uh, what are you looking for in a tree here? In a, well, I'm the one that's selling them. If you want to talk to somebody that's looking for one... Well, nobody said investigative reporting comes easily, but their efforts are paying off, especially in class. They show a lot of potential. They're real uh, appreciative of good criticism. After being married and working for Moody Bible Institute and the Family Channel, in 1997 we moved back to Portland and in 1999 I actually went on my own as an independent producer. And then in 2010 we took a family road trip to the national parks in the western United States and I took my gear with me. And Noah, he was about 12 years old at the time. And he was showing a lot of promise in acting, and he was very verbal, even from, you know, two, two years old. Very surprising. And so we put him in front of the camera at these various national parks. And, you know, when we got to, the, to Grand Canyon, you know, we were up on the rim, and I said, hey, Noah, talk about how Colorado River could have gone over hill. Noah got involved, and he got very comfortable in front of the camera. And the funny thing was, you know, he didn't aspire to be a uh, camera personality or a TV host. It just came very naturally to him. But it was the area of science that was uh, fascinating to him. He loves science. And so this is a way for him to, to delve into it, to get to know it more. So we'll see. Maybe he'll end up in space someday. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, but we fostered those, those gifts in him. What was great is when we started producing Awesome Science, it was a family trip. We had a nine-seater Suburban, and we were on the road for 25 days, and we had six kids at the time, two dogs and a trailer, and we just traveled the roads. I think we hit seven, 8,000 miles just in that trip. But as Awesome Science started picking up, we bought an old RV, and we used to travel in that, and we started shooting more content. Uh, and we ended up doing uh, an animal series out in the California desert called Creeping Things, uh, as well as other shoots and projects. And we always did it as a family. Spent a lot of time on the road, and all the kids chipped in. They did uh, different roles within the production side, and they still do it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. What's really cool about it is that the projects we're doing are kingdom driven. It's just not a corporate job, but it's something that will impact lives for eternity. We're impacting more and more people with this little road trip, this little family that's gone on the road and done these projects. Through this process, we've been very active in trying to identify the gifts of our children and how they might fit into kingdom work. And so we want to encourage other parents to also do the same thing. So that's why I'm here. As you work to foster those gifts in your children, I found that there are multiple layers of how those gifts come about. And one of the first things is the spiritual gifts that God has given your children. As we read through different passages in Corinthians and Ephesians, we see as many as 30 spiritual gifts that God gives the church. And some people have more, some people have less. And some of those include everything from acts of service to teaching, evangelism. Uh, some of them are in creative spaces like the ones that I do. And so these are, are gifts that 
God has given the body of Christ in different types of measure to help edify the church and to bring new believers into the church. And so that's exciting. I mean, these are supernatural things. One of the ways that I've heard that you can recognize some of these gifts in you is if you end up doing acts of service and by the end of it, you are just energized and you're so excited by what just happened. That's probably a spiritual gift. That's a good way to identify it. Um, if you know teaching is, and some people loathe getting in front of groups and teaching, uh, and so maybe that's not your spiritual gift, um, or evangelism, and some people just get so charged by that. And so if there's areas like that, uh, that's probably good. And it's probably good to maybe do an evaluation on your kids as well as yourself on what are your spiritual gifts. And those gifts, they don't all come at once. Sometimes God over time gives different ones to you. And so those are things to discover and things to pray about. The next area is natural talents. Now, if somebody has a great singing voice, or maybe they're just a big, strong guy, you know, acts of service would be great, right? Or maybe they love to dance and they're really good at it, um, or they play an instrument really well. I mean, those are just natural talents. Now, the gifts that I'm talking about to build God's kingdom, uh, they might not necessarily be natural talents. Uh, but sometimes spiritual gifts and talents combine, and that's when it's exciting. Uh, I've always enjoyed singing. I feel like I'm a pretty good singer, but it's not the passion area that I have to advance God's kingdom. It's in the creative space, and so you see different people, and you think, boy, wouldn't they be a great so-and-so? Wouldn't they do great such things for the kingdom with that great talent? And uh, that might not be what God has in mind, so just keep that in mind. The next area is what I call passions, meaning, you know, what do they get really excited about? And I think this kind of falls in line with spiritual gifts at the same time, but, you know, it's a little different. So I would kind of define it as like a passion for the lost. And so they might not necessarily have the gift of spiritual or, or evangelism, but, uh, you know, maybe it's some other way of reaching the lost. And so there's the passions that God puts on our hearts. Uh, you know, sometimes through prayer or fasting, God talks to us and lays visions or, or things on our hearts or, you know, maybe a, a well-respected mentor, you know, says something that uh, ignites a passion. And sometimes we can see these things in our kids. I know for our daughter Gracie, you know, her passion was the lost. And so whenever she was with us at a store as a little kid, she would uh, often say, do you know God loves you to the cashier? And it's like, whoa, that is so cool. <laughs> and, you know, but it's not something we said, hey, you know, ask if they, if they know God loves them. No, no, it was just, it was in her. It was a passion that God put there to then share with other people. So there's passions. Um, you know, with me, it was video. That was my passion. I loved it. I love working with the hands. I love seeing pictures come together. And I think God uses those passions to help advance us, you know, towards his kingdom. The next thing to remember about fostering the gifts in your children for the kingdom is that we're made in God's image. And a lot of people kind of wonder, well, what does that mean? And one of the things is that I look at is that, you know, he spoke and he created the world. And he didn't create some drab place. I mean, this, this is a really cool place with beautiful flowers and amazing animals. I mean, the creativity that our creator had, I believe he's passed on to us. And we love to create great things. We love to invent. We love to, to build things from nothing. I'm sure you, you know, often I know in our family, Legos were amazing. And uh, they fostered this thing inside of our head. It's like, boy, can I imagine this thing that I can make with Legos? And then we sit there and we make it without instructions. And maybe your kids have come to you and they show you something. And you're like, whoa, that is so cool. And they made it from scratch. And those are things that are in uh, innate in us because we're made in the image of our creator. And so we want to encourage those things. And if they're using those, those parts of uh, God's image in what they're doing, you know, praise them and say, that is so cool. You know what? You are following in God's image and what you're doing to, and then using that to further the kingdom is even a greater step. And I think God made us in his image so that we could further his kingdom and a lot of these different aspects. 
Another way that fosters God's gifts in our children for his kingdom is the whole sanctification process and maturity. It kind of goes hand in hand. And as the uh, children that we have are uh, developing the relationship with God and God's talking to them and we're helping encourage them and mentor and disciple them, you know, they're going to grow up into the things that God has for them. And part of that is just like Joseph, when God gave the vision for him that he was going to be the ruler, did it happen right away? No, <laughs> because he, he didn't have the maturity and the insight and the growth uh, in the character of God to be able to step into that. And so being able to encourage our children to, to read the word, but also not just to read it, but to examine their own hearts and to live before the Lord, to glorify him. And as they do that, I believe that God will open up new opportunities for them, new divine appointments, things that they'll be able to step into and use the gifts that they have for God's kingdom. And so there's an area of sanctification and then God grants favor and opens new doors through that process. And so that's something we can help our, our children in. Kind of the next step to that is God's leading. Uh, I know that with our daughter Gracie, uh, she lo was looking at missions and she's always had a desire for that. And she, she sought God's uh, direction in what she should do and where she should go. And we've seen that this year where God's kind of directed her to Scotland and she'll be there this summer doing missions work. And so through divine revelation sometimes where maybe in prayer or maybe a dream that God uses that to direct our children to use their gifts for his kingdom in certain directions or in certain ways. I remember uh, as a kid, uh, probably teenager, 13 or 14, and I was praying, Lord, how do I use this gifts in, in, in video? You know, what's that going to look like? And I remember having a vision of Moses holding up his staff and the waters parting or, you know, things would happen with that staff. And I remember God telling me, Kyle, your, your camera is your staff and that you're going to break open new areas and you're going to uh, be able to impact uh, in, in a big way with your camera and through the videos that you do. And that, to me, that was just encouragement to me, knowing that God was behind it and that he was doing, going to do great things. And he was already doing great things at the time. Remember, if we remember back to the passage in, in Ephesians, that God way beforehand had things planned for us, the works that we would do, it was already planned out. And so God was just reaffirming in me the things that he was going to be doing through me. And that was exciting. I mentioned some of my children and just wanted to kind of walk you through what are some of the things that we have been doing as parents to help foster those gifts in our children for the kingdom. You know, Noah, I've talked about him and how we stuck him in front of the camera, uh, how he's very verbal and that uh, he has a passion for science. One of the things that we did open up the door with him on was uh, the debate club uh, for homeschoolers. And he was in that for two years. As verbal as he was, he was still kind of shy to get up in front of people. And I think that was one tool that God used to help kind of overcome that. And now he's not that terrified. Uh, our other children, Jeremiah, I haven't talked about. Jeremiah and Noah are like the best of buds, uh, have been since they were very little, but uh, quite different in their personalities. Jeremiah really didn't want to be in front of the camera. Uh, he would love to just work on computers and do graphics and artistic type stuff, but at the same time, not in front of the camera. When he was uh, about 12, 13, I started teaching him how to do editing and doing production work. And uh, he started earning money from me uh, for doing corporate work and so on. And he actually uh, ended up earning enough money to buy his own computer system and then build that. And he's been learning online courses in graphics and animation. And within a short period of time, I was actually hiring him to, to do some of my graphics and animation for my corporate work. And that's been exciting. He's actually a professional in what he's doing. His passion in long term is to get into doing uh, 2D classic animation for uh, TV shows and feature films. And so he's, he's already prepared himself very much uh, to go that direction. And in another year, he's 19 now, he'll be going to the Vancouver Film School to learn classical animation there. 
And so we fostered that in him and enabled him to have the tools. Um, often when you know, he wanted to get a drawing, electronic drawing pad, a Wacom tablet, uh, or other software or hardware cards, you know, we found ways to try and uh, help him get that. I mentioned our daughter Gracie, who's now 16 years old, and uh, her her passion is evangelism, but she also has some natural talents in the area of fashion design. We've been working to encourage her mostly on the, the mission side. Uh, you know, of course, all the academics are coming along with that, but uh, she, she has a desire to reach out to the lost. Um, she's talked many years about starting an orphanage in India or you know something like that. That's her heart and that's so exciting to see and we try and encourage her in every opportunity in that as she grows and matures in Christ. Our next daughter is Esther who is 14 now. Early on it was amazing how uh, well, she could sing. At the, the Firmly Planted Learning Center, where our kids take some classes, there's a choir there, and the gal who leads it is just amazing. She's been able to grow in that and to see her use those skills. And then she's been taking piano, and she loves piano. She took a little bit of guitar, and so she's getting training in the areas of music. My next one down is Josiah, who's 11 years old. He has always uh, had a lot of fun doing stuff with video. Uh, one time he said he was gonna take over my business. <laughs> That's awesome. A couple days ago he came to me, Dad, I'm, I'm thinking of starting an animation channel on YouTube. You know, how do I do that? And so we sat down and I kind of drew out, uh, you know, the different steps for getting that started for him. And uh, he's gonna come in here to the studio and and do some drawing, you know, being able to foster that and uh, get them into some animation classes or some online classes. Uh, that's cool. And then, you know, my other kids are Elizabeth, Isaiah, and Mercianna. They're a little too young to, to exactly see the talents and places that God has for them, but it's so cool. Uh, for instance, Isaiah, he's five, six. He has this amazing ability to kind of observe something mechanical and then repeat it pretty quick. But the other thing about him is, you know, I mentioned spiritual gifts and there's the gifts, uh, gift of helps. And that's where they see an opportunity that somebody needs help in and they anticipate it and they like are proactively reaching out to help somebody. And that's like, man, that's, I mean, he's been there since two years old. And so you combine those things together and it's like, wow, where is God going to take him? Uh, being able to uh, I think as a father, you know, if I'm working on something, not to, you know, p push him back uh, as much as I can and say, no, no, I'll do it, but to try and keep him in what I'm doing. I remember as a father, I was building some homemade screens for our windows. I think as a two-year-old, he just came right in front of me with the screen and he was like, watching me make them right in front of him and he was observing and it's gonna be fun to see what happens uh, with him. The more kids you have, and some of your big families might see this, where you see so many differences and you see so many personality types and the looks they have, but also the passions and things that God is putting into them. And there's such a variety. And uh, it's so cool to be able to, to encourage our children in those things. I remember talking to somebody one time and I was telling them about my children and they kind of stepped back and they were like, wow, you really know your children. I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I guess I do. <laughs> and you know, the, the point was, is a lot of fathers, they just don't take the time to get to know who their children are. And granted, I'm a long way from uh, learning everything about my children and that's a lifetime there. So as parents, how do we foster those different gifts? Well, one of the things that I would say is to try and observe those things early in their lives. For instance, Isaiah, I mentioned, where he's really into mechanical stuff and he just observe it from the very beginning. Well, you know, try and open the door on that and, and welcome him into different opportunities that he can learn and grow. And another thing to try and do is to find mentors for your children. Uh, one of the things that I did Oh, about 10 years ago was I taught a video class to a bunch of homeschool families. And even some of those homeschool families reached out to me and they said, hey, you know, could our son or daughter come in and, and you know, go out with you on productions or, you know, kind of help them to grow in those gifts? And I was like, yeah, come on, you know, bring them on. <laughs> and uh, it was fun. It was fun to see those grow. Now, there's other areas like, um, you know, medical or... 
construction or you know things that you think that maybe your kids are interested in uh, you know trying to expose them to those things so that they can see hey that's really cool yeah I want to do this and maybe there's a mentor that that they could follow for a period of time and ask questions and uh, that's that's really a way for them to get exposed to the real world and to discover, eh, yeah, I kind of like this, or eh, maybe it wasn't what I thought it was. So, you know, finding those mentors. Another thing you can do is to pray about new opportunities for your children. It's so much fun to see how God answers those requests. Uh, you know, let them be creative. As parents, we're creating this environment. It has discipline, but it also is fostering creativity at the same time. Since our children are at home for homeschooling a lot, maybe they're involved in you know, co-ops or learning centers and so on, um, there's a lot of things we can do to enable and foster those gifts in our children. You know, I mentioned Jeremiah and him getting involved in uh, his own computer system and getting the right software and uh, hardware that he needed. Uh, then you had like Noah where we got him involved in debate and television and science. And so we were doing what we could to ha give them resources so that they could grow in those gifts. And I mentioned opportunities. Maybe it's outside of the home. Uh, maybe, you know, there's things that you just can't afford. Uh, you know, for instance, if they're have a passion for construction, uh, you know, just going out and buying a backhoe probably isn't realistic. <laughs> but, you know, there are other opportunities that they can grow in. And that's exciting to, to see a world that is constantly growing in technology and opportunities and gain, seeing our children being able to plug into those is exciting. The other great thing is in today's world, there are so many amazing opportunities to uh, train online. Uh, there's <clears throat> excuse me, some great platforms like Linda. Uh, there's a myriad of, of YouTube videos that you can learn from, as well as different learning management systems that different colleges have put on or uh, different groups uh, have put on. And you can get on those systems and learn uh, either interactively or just by observing those videos. Another way to help foster those gifts is conferences and workshops. And that's uh, places where maybe they're doing a medical workshop or a medical conference and your kids are interested in medical stuff. Well, uh, there's great seminars that you can go to as well as, uh, you know, trade show booths that they can go and they talk to, to people. And you never know what type of opportunities God would open up for that. Uh, with, with Jeremiah, uh, this last year, we went down to Anaheim for the weekend and we went to uh, something called CTN, which is a creative network where they have a whole a bunch of trade show booths and big companies like Sony Animation and Pixar and DreamWorks were all there. And Jeremiah and I, and we went up and we started talking to the different folks there and how you could get involved in interning and uh, learning more about how to get jobs there in the future and what types of requirements they had for college education. But look for those workshops, local workshops. If you have the finances, you know, go to some other place. And that's a lot of fun anyway, just to you know, take one of your kids and go on the road and, and just have fun together. So to wrap up, I know that seeing your children grow up or mature, all of those things, but to see them also grow in the gifts that God has put in their heart, the passions and the things that might uh, drive them toward a, a career and further God's kingdom all at the same time. It's exciting to see those things happen. Of course, it's not a straight road. There's bumps along the way. God is maturing them and growing them and so on. And, uh, yeah, but it's a process and we can be a part of that and to be able to uh, think like the the different uh, people in the parable that Jesus gave that uh, had the different talents and you know Jesus talks about that the master gave them talents to invest and you know I, I think there's going to be a certain amount of accountability in in how we as parents invested into our children to see them grow into the adults that they will be to make an impact for the kingdom. And then also we're setting a role model for them in how to do that with their children. I think back to my own dad. He gave us a lot of, of liberal use of his gear so that we could be creative and practice and grow. I really believe a lot of that has made me who I am today. And so I had a great role model. 
And it's exciting to be able to do that in our children. When my son Josiah comes in, hey dad, can I borrow this camera, that camera? It's like, yeah, just be careful and here's the rules and follow that. It's just so exciting to be a part of God's kingdom and being able to encourage the next generation as they serve and desire to follow him. To find out more about the ministry we do as a family, which is Awesome Science Media, you can go to our website, awesomesciencemedia.com. And you can look at our different series we're doing there. You can find out how to, to get copies, uh, either DVD or online, uh, as well as many of our social media sites, like our YouTube channel and Facebook channels, and our different series from, uh, I mentioned Awesome Science uh, with Noah is one of our series. It's 12 episodes. We're done shooting that series, at least for now. And maybe one of the other kids want to pick that up later on and host it, but we'll see. <laughs> I remember some of our children looking at Noah and going, Dad, when can we have our own series? Well, we did. We created another series for our four middle kids, and it's called Dino Kids. And we shot that in June of last year out in Glendive, Montana. And that'll be actually coming out as a DVD, two episodes, the second quarter of this year. If you go on our website, there's a place to sign up for our email newsletter and you can uh, learn more about what we're doing and we give updates and you know when new DVDs are coming out. We also have a uh, our 27, 28, 30 titles that we have. Um, all can be accessed from a subscriber video on demand platform at awesomesci.tv.com. And uh, we made it very inexpensive and we're adding new uh, study guides for the material there that you can use in your homeschool families. So that's kind of cool. One of the, the fun projects we did was Debunking Evolution. And that is a DVD with two teens that are acting, but uh, our whole family was there to, to help produce it, to help with the props, uh, to help uh, with the food, and, and it was just fun to do that as a family. I mentioned Creeping Things, that's our Abrupt Tiles and Amphibian series. We shot that with Nathan Husherson and his family down in California. And then we also have our Heavens Declare series, which is a series of documentaries on astronomy from a biblical worldview. My oldest daughter, Gracie, she's our on-camera person to do demonstrations. And so a lot of my kids, they make it into our different shows. There's the Dino Hunter series, and that is exploring dinosaurs from a biblical worldview. And Noah and Jeremiah were behind the scenes doing shooting with that. And then we have a new series coming up called The Top 10 coming out next quarter and that is the top 10 evidences for uh, young earth the top 10 uh, myths of evolution our kids got involved when we went and shot on the Oregon coast and more recently I've gotten together with Pat Roy who is the creator of the Jonathan Park audio adventure series and we started a new series called the creation guys our families get involved they're on camera they're shooting video of us or operating drones there's a lot of fun stuff that happens with those shows. The more recent one that we're doing, uh, releasing right away, is uh, just looking at the flat earth and how a lot of Christians are believing in the flat earth and looking at the scientific and the biblical uh, side of that. And uh, we believe that the earth is round and that there are many evidences for that, as well as understanding scripture uh, in a way. And the scripture itself doesn't clearly say the earth is flat around, but uh, there's a lot of other things God has enabled us to discover that uh, help us to understand the shape of the earth. And then we also did a tour of the Ark encounter. Pat and I went through the Ark, and if you've never been there, it's a great video for you to look at. And we have many more coming out. So go on our website at Awesome Science Media, sign up our email newsletter, and uh, learn more about what we're doing.